Hey, good morning. It's 1022 a.m. It is May 27th and it is Memorial Day. Some of you guys might work a five day week, so then you have a three day work, uh, weekend. So I hope you guys are enjoying it, kicking back, celebrating Memorial Day based on how you've celebrated it. Or maybe you might be trying something new. Some people barbecue on this day, um, some people go to the, uh, the cemetery to pay their respects to veterans or whatever. And you know, some people just you know, just kick back and watch TV. Whatever it is that's going to cause you some sort of enjoyment, I hope that you're indulging in it and having a good time. So, I just decided to come on here and make another video. This morning, okay, I have one more video to make for my Patreon channel, okay? And, um, you know, I think right now, it's what's in the air, at least in my mental, um, in my mind, you know, when it comes to intuitive messages, is that, um, you know, I was talking about transformation, how hard it is sometimes for us to reach our goals because we deal with things like obstacles and enemies. Um, and, you know, I was going to make two separate videos and then I decided that there's ways that I can merge this topic together, right? So this is why I woke up this morning, turned on my computer because I wanted to work and make this video for Patreon, okay? But as I started working, I started getting more messages, intuitive messages that were coming into me, to my mind. And I kept thinking, okay, well, I'm gonna make a video for YouTube this morning, okay? Because, you know, I'm trying to keep these issues separate. They don't necessarily relate to the video that I wanted to make. But, you know, I'm the kind of person who feels as though I need to keep my momentum, okay? So I felt more strongly about this particular issue which I'm going to be addressing later on in this video. Um, and this is basically talking about, you know, um, gang stalking and, and stuff like that. I'm talking about, you know, what I was doing was I was thinking about like, what if I had the ability to change things? Like, okay, and I am not a political person, okay? But I stay out of those things. But I was having these like hypothetical, I do a lot of hypothetical thinking, okay? I do a lot. Because, you know, it's important and, and when you do these things, you, you kind of go through these like what if scenarios, you know, you start trying to think through certain processes, which is, is in good. It, it, it's good to do this and look at things from different angles. So that's going to be going on in the next half of this video. Um, but I felt a little bit more passionately about expressing something uh, related to this issue more so than focusing on the content that I'm having for Patreon. I mean, you, you know, the, the Patreon issue is very demoralizing to me and it is express uh, a source of frustration, mainly because it relates to the gang stalking issue um, and me dealing with other forms of, and I'm not painting, I'm not saying this is what Patreon is doing. I'm saying my experience with how I feel going on to Patreon because of the issues of, the, number one, the separation of my pricing, knowing that Libra 14 had something to do with a lot of this issue. And did the whole, you know, you've heard it, okay? You've been here listening to my rants about this, my discovery of how all this stuff is like unfolding and all this other stuff. So you get the picture, okay? So anyway, uh, there, there's a lot of times where, you know, I understand it, it's hard for me to feel like confident about posting my videos and stuff like this on my Patreon channel, this one's on Manifesto, mainly because of this, I call it the bottleneck or the, yeah, the bottleneck, you know, like when like the water is flowing through like a, like a funnel or something and then something kind of like obstructs the flow. And then it just slowly, it's like slow movement, just not really flowing the way that it should. It's very frustrating for me, especially dealing with the nightmare of nine to five. I will say that I'm getting very positive messages relating to what's going on with my ex -net network and the people that I used to know. And there seems like there's being, there's slowly, things are getting better slowly but surely. But unfortunately, because I've been in this situation for such a long time, I'm always going to feel like it's not moving fast enough. Okay. And I also don't want to come off as sounding presumptuous or anything, but I'm trying to keep myself, you know, busy, focused and motivated at the same time. And so going back to motivation, you know, there, well, the one of the reasons why I'm autonomous is because I've dealt with people who create feelings of stagnicity and make that in, in as a result causes people to lose their drive and their, their, their energy. Okay. This is one of the reasons why 
partnerships is not for everybody okay because like for example okay when i was younger i was like all gung-ho about um garage sales be honest with you i'm still gung-ho about garage sales and i will tell you some of the items that i used to look for back in the 90s were worth getting up at like 5 30 in the morning getting dressed and making sure that i was the first person at that garage sale to get certain items okay like people know i have always liked pyrex i like anchor hawking i like you know vintage libby glassware stuff like that okay and you know people just were getting Back in those days, like people would get up early in the morning, start setting their stuff out. Okay. So I'm all gung ho. Then I'd go to my um, adoptive sister's house and, you know, because she was the kind of person, she's not a morning person. So I would tell her the night before, be ready. I'm going to come, you know, I'm coming to get you. All right. And then she's just still in bed when I'm going to get her. This is not me pick, pick, trying to pick a fight, but I'm saying is, and then you have to wait and you're you're dulling down it's causing you know stagnation and then you finally get there and guess what people are already picked through the good stuff okay so i'm the kind of person i feel as though a lot of times people just get in my way and i think sometimes people just you know they might be doing it to be friendly or they might be trying to be helpful but a lot of times people just get in your way in in libra 14's case that dude was a turd he shouldn't even existed okay but anyway I am somebody who just, I believe that the, our best work is, comes from our fire and our drive. So ask yourself when you are going into a business venture or whatever, where is this person going to add to my fire and drive or, or are they just going to stagnate me? Okay. And if they're the kind of person who seems like they're always throwing wrenches in your plans, and I'm not talk, just talking about business plans or somebody who's talking about business ventures, I'm talking about any sort of partnership. Because if somebody's constantly dulling your drive, making you feel slow and stagnated, that's not a good idea, okay? And so a lot of times people always think that partnerships is the best way to handle things not for everybody okay this is this is a part of understanding yourself as an individual like i said some people they love partnerships and they don't mind you know making those accommodations compromises here i i'm i'm going to tell you right now in my relationship there is no compromise when it comes to stuff certain things okay when it comes to me get being on fire for certain things like if i ask somebody to do something for me and believe me this is one of the reasons why i don't ask people to do things for me I, I don't like people doing things because I deal with people who either say I'm going to do this at a specific time and once you say you're going to be do something at a specific time I'm like okay we're ready we're ready to go okay and then they'll come up with some bullshit about oh, okay I can't do this right now or they won't call to let you know what's going on or whatever I, I don't deal with flakes okay I don't and I don't, I feel as if a person's really serious about something, they're not going to do that. Now, the only kind of excuse I accept is like an emergency or something like that. If you make a commitment and you flake out on it, bye. That's just how I am. Okay. Because one thing is more important than anything else is drive. And if you try to squash my drive, it's just, it's not going to happen. Okay, and I found the workplace extremely frustrating because there were times where I had, you know, was high to oversee certain projects or something. And once this, you know, I already have it in my mind, let's do this, right? The problem with it is, is trying to incite other people to be as excited as you are. Okay, I don't need to bend over backwards and like do all kinds of crazy shit to try to excite the team. Unfortunately, this is the work structure. structure. You have a bunch of people who do not care about certain things as much as you do. Okay, and so deep down inside, you're like, man, I wish I could just fucking just do this whole thing by myself. But it's unrealistic to do that, right? Because, you know, you can't you can't do all of the, the components together. I mean, um, all by yourself. Okay, there's just not enough time. So sometimes working with the team is not always the best idea okay so what do you do you i'm the i'm the kind of person okay let's just start from the bottom okay i know that there's a lot of people who well, i know i know my patreon channel is being watched as a matter of fact i said i'm getting pretty good vibes about it but right now i'm just going to just kind of like just deal with things right now but when it comes to like some of the the, the printed material that i'm offering with my patreon um videos okay this is all this like i said the page swan song manifesto is a one woman show 
And it's not, when I created the Swan Song Manifesto, it was, my purpose was number one, not to exclude business partners, but not to include them either. It just simply never crossed my mind to have any business partnerships, seeing as how the Swan Song Manifesto is about one woman who's basically struggled all her life and basically focused on her spiritual life to get her through and offering people information on how they can use certain things to and apply it to their life. Okay. So that was what, you know, derailed me from my uh, plan of creating the video for Patreon. But I feel as though this is a good video that I'm trying to make. And obviously there must be something that I need to express because, um, you know, uh, I, I need to get over what's going on with me and I'm, I'm trying to heal because this is a bigger deal than a lot of people really thought that it was. Okay. So I did get some intuitive messages, um, last night and this morning, and I did write them down. Um, so I can do this video at some point, you know what I mean? I didn't think I was going to sit here and ramble on about, you know, uh, workplace violations or something like that this morning, it kind of came to me this morning, but it, oh, it's a long story. Okay. Cause my intent was to actually put out my video content for Patreon. Shut up, Maria, stop moving and stop talking. Just get on with the video. All right. So anyway, I got the intuitive message that a lot of people would like to be are interested in doing the comedy skits with me. Now, um, I know I've mentioned in the past that, you know, I'm the kind of person I will think about funny stuff, stupid stuff, right? Weird. I like a lot of humor. Okay. Um, some of the humor that I like, right, like it, it kind of ranges from different styles of humor. You know what I mean? Um, I, I like a lot of absurd humor. And I also like a lot of clever wit humor. So, you know, I think a lot of people have like a mixed bag of what they like when it comes to humor. And a lot of people think, they look at me and they think, oh, Maria doesn't have a sense of humor. I, people who know the old Maria mean that old Maria is the same person, okay? But the old Maria didn't know that she was a victim of um, a, a Nazi experiment. The old Maria believed that Mary Gordon was her biological mother. The old Maria... Uh, believed a little bit more in humanity. Okay. <laughs> Maria had a positive, uh, I would say an overall decent view of humanity before she came to the understanding what pe human nature, I mean, deep down human nature really is. Okay. So, but I do have an extremely, uh, uh, I don't know, I would say a pretty good sense of humor. I like to laugh. I, I remember growing up laughing till I had tears in my eyes. May, and do remember making several videos telling my viewers how my view of happiness or my definition of happiness was laughing till I had tears in my eyes. And that was my dream of having that on a daily basis. Okay. Now, mind you, okay, that was a little far-fetched and unrealistic. <laughs> okay. But I guess what I was searching for was to be happy. And I understand that happiness really in this life is not exactly what we think it's going to be or what we want it to be. And there's only certain levels that you can obtain in early existence, no matter who the hell you are on this plane of existence. Okay. Which I'm going into a little bit more in my video that I'm working on. Okay. But I enjoy laughing. I, I enjoy, you know, weird stuff, comedy, humor, um, and so there, you know, I, 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 I go through these little skits, like these what if scenarios and, you know, I kept thinking, man, this would be funny if so-and-so said this, or they have the right voice to like pull off this line. So yeah, I do. But, you know, I also want to make sure that, you know, I'm, I'm coming up with these ideas for the Swan Song Manifesto because Swan Song Manifesto does have a, um, it's an occultic type vibe. Okay. And I do understand that. I am comprised of more than just the occult. Okay. Like, you know, um, a lot of my things, my personal interests do have a little occult leanings. Like I know that the, there's been a lot of talk about my painting of my, um, and I picked this up intuitively, <laughs> a lot of painting of like the candle holder that I just recently made and showed out of sculpt. I made it out of sculpty clay and showed it in one of my videos just recently. Okay. And I, of course, I know there was this issue about is Maria analytical. She needs to prove it. Um, she, we're, we're calling her an artist and you know, when they know good and well that, you know, I, I am more analytical than I am, but my art is analytical. 
seeing as how it relates to magic. I believe that these things can be merged, okay? I think mainstream society, based off these little tests of, of like employers they use to try to put people in little boxes or whatever, that's very one-dimensional. I am not one-dimensional, okay? Now, um, where was I going with this? Yeah, okay, going back to the um, <laughs> wanting people to do skits and stuff like that. I think that's great. Right now, I do have a day of where um, I'm trying to get myself back on schedule, okay? Mm -hmm. Meaning, like, I know I've been avoiding emails. I know I've been avoiding um, logging into any social media account. Any, just about everything freaks me out right now. And so, you know, there's times where I have to literally take myself by the hand, talk myself through even doing anything online because of me experiencing such negative things online. I do understand that a lot the, the what do you call it? Um, people have kind of changed and they understand what happened, why they shouldn't have done it, how big this thing blew up, you know, how messed up it is. And I understand that things are getting better little by little, but that to me is still not enough to make me feel safe. Okay. This is what I'm trying to make people understand. So, this week, I have written down on my calendar a day for me to, in, in, you know, engage in social media by the hour. Like, uh, this hour, I'm going to go deal with Facebook, respond to whatever, check out things. If I have any advertisements that I need to post on Facebook, I need to do those things. I need to start following up on things, okay? Because I've been avoiding outside society, the stimulation of it. Because everything in my mind is like, what kind of possible evil am I going to have to deal with? And this is an understandable fear after being tormented, terrorized for as long as this program has been going on. Especially like online and stuff. Also, the intuitive messages that I got is that people think that I should sell my mojo, mojo items on my Patreon channel. I don't know how you can do that, like item by item. I've been, throughout the years, I make items, you know, like, for example, I love making barrettes for young girls' hair, as well as some, I call some women um, kind of fun and, um, uh, I don't know, um, quirky, quirky type girls. Um, I, around the ages of, I don't know, um, 16 through maybe 25, sometimes even older than that, people who are very much into their inner child. And I like making hair breaths, okay? Um, and so, um, and other auto items like, you know, felt brooches, felt dolls, felt pillows, um, and sometimes making things out of regular fabric. Um, as far as my clay items and stuff like that, those are personal. I would never sell those, okay? But like, I do like making stuffed animals and stuff like that. And a lot of times I do like making enchanted items, okay? I was thinking about offering those as mojo flash items, you know, instead of actually selling them. But I do get a lot of this intuitive message where people think that I should sell them. Um, I don't know because, you know, I, I can't do anything like special type ordering type items mainly because I don't have the time for that. My main thing is selling, um, I mean, working on content. And I do know that, you know, mojo items are just things that I do on the side, but I do, I do want and like to see people wearing my things. Like I like it seeing people wear my hair barrettes. I do. I think it's so cool. Um, I also like seeing, um, people with my keychains, you know what I mean? I just, I like that. Okay. It's, it's, it's very cool. So, um, you know, I don't know for now, I'm just going to be doing the flash mojo, how that's going to work. I don't know. I haven't really, like, really thought through the structure process. I have, but I haven't done anything and I've been avoiding Patreon, you know, for quite a while. Um, anyway, but as soon as I'm done with this last video, I will be posting and I want things to be kind of clear up on Patreon because I'm really tired of that. Okay. So anyway, um, I'm in charge of the collaborations that I'm going to be doing for this once on Manifesto. And, you know, I do want to reach out to some people. I will be reaching out to people on social media, um, not with like any long lengthy messages. Sometimes some of it's just going to be me like following them. And then throughout the course of time, you know, um, I will follow up later. And some people I might make comments on or whatever. But, um, you know, I, if I take an interest in you, that obviously means that I, I want you in my like social circle or whatever and to get to know you. Okay. Um, so yeah, I, 
I, I was thinking about the, the comedy skits. And there was also like maybe I was thinking about um, like this. OK, here's this, this idea. OK, I'm pitching this idea because, yes, I am very occult related. Right. But I also had this weird idea of a, of a like maybe like a 30 minute TV show that could possibly be ad libbed by celebrities. And I'm saying ad libbed is because um, I'm experimenting with different acting styles. And maybe they might tell me, hey, you know what? That's not possible. You can't do that. OK, because I've never done any acting other than a play that I was in, like when I was in sixth grade or like one that I was in in elementary school. <laughs> okay, I don't know. OK, OK, there could be scripts or something. But like there's this there's anyway, there's this like show that I was thinking of is called Deja Vu with you. Right. And it's about two immortal women, <laughs> two immortal women who feel as though, you know, time is catching up with them. They're just like running from one place to another because people are starting to like connect the dots. There is no way this person could be on this register for this particular. So anyway, I, I wanted to talk to certain people and find out, you know, are certain things possible? You know what I mean? Uh, mind you, Everything is started from the ground up. Okay, this is what I think is kind of cool about the Swan Song Manifesto. So how do you deal with things like filming? How is it possible to record filming in certain locations, merge it all together? Obviously there is, okay? But, you know, those are just some of the ideas. And are, are some of the ideas possible? Like you can have an idea, but if, if you present it and somebody says, okay, well, I could, I, from these people's experience, they could tell me, okay, that's not possible. You can't do that. Okay, so then re-strategize. What else can we do? You know, can this be done? Blah, 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 blah. This is how you, you know, uh, collaborate. This is how you, you know, organize and try to figure out what, what to do. But like I said, you know, Swan Song Manifesto is about um, me looking back on my life and trying to live or gain back sometimes, some things, some privileges, some things that I missed out in life. You know what I mean? I missed out on a lot in life, okay? So maybe I didn't get a chance to go to a person's concert, but hey, now I, I can I can collaborate with them now and we can do something. And it could be based off of that particular person's idea that they missed out on, okay? So this is one of the reasons I went, you know, maybe, what if like maybe me years ago, they wanted to act out a part of being, I don't know, um, to, to play John F. Kennedy. Okay, I, I can't think of anything, but you know, this is just an example. Okay, well, let's just do a skit off based off of that. You know what I mean? Just whatever. And um, it's just kind of like a bunch of brainstorming. I want things to be fun, kind of light, and I want to be able to, you know, do something different that's going to draw people's attention, but also give people kind of hope because I understand the kind of like, okay, I'm 53 years old, you know, and there's a lot of us who um, I've watched throughout the years and, you know, it's like we're older and it's like, I think something fun needs to be created for a lot of older people. Mind you, I am somebody who also cares a lot about people who are in their teenage years because this is like the years where you're like discovering who you are. But, you know, I, I would say that, you know, Maria is an adult and, you know, I'm trying to help adult people find good positive things to to live for to care for because i know that life can be very disappointing so i'm <laughs> I, I know that it can be so the only thing that we can really do is like raise the vibration but we have to do that as individuals and i sometimes think that people who are adults have given up on any sort of new revival in their life they just feel like okay what what the hell now and they're that they're still alive we're still breathing and we need to keep going and we need to keep doing it happily and in the best way we can and i think we deserve that since we had to put up with nightmares shitty whole you know jobs horrible families disrespectful people blah, blah 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 so this is for us right and then like i said you know i do want some younger type things too i, I i'm a young at heart person okay but you know I also understand what it's like to get older. So, you know, it is what it is. Okay, so the other message that I got is a lot of people feel as though I should have some sort of beef conflict with white women. Okay, and um, I do know that a lot of the issues that I experienced were relating to my bullying. A lot of it was white women. And the funny thing is, um, you know, I'm thinking from the top of my head, white women 
that I know, I, I don't know very many white women, okay, except for like my few of my employers, um, and I'm not going to start mentioning names, because I'm going to tell you right now, some of these people, um, I do know, get the, the intuitive message that a lot of white people are getting bullied and disrespected, and people hear things on social media channels, and they start acting out on stuff, okay, um, this whole thing that started off as like just somebody kidding, somebody goofing off in the workplace has spiraled into something like literally dark and very tragic. Okay. And so I am going to be very careful. I, these people, do these people deserve their bullying? I will tell you, you made my life hell. Okay. But I'm trying to bring things to peace and I'm, I'm I've made videos to encourage people to not sit here and bully white people or anything like that. Okay. But I will say, okay. Um, I can only think of like a few white women that I remember and I did not have a, a, a particular beef with them other than the sort of bullshit that they would say and do to undermine me, okay? I do know that they work probably alongside of Labor 14 to try to mess my life over, okay? I, I get that feeling, okay? Um, do I hate white women? I don't sit here and like hate on white women. And, and I, I don't sit here and think about getting revenge on white women. I don't ever recall having any sort of vendetta against white women at any time in my life. Okay. Um, when I think of beautiful women, I have included some white women in that category. Okay. Like, you know, I'm the kind of person I, I used to watch, not like, you know, made it a point to, but like, let's just say, for example, I was channel surfing. Okay. I was bored, had nothing to do. And then like some of these pageants would come on. Right. I'm like, okay, I would look at all these beautiful women. And of course, if the woman is good looking, I'm going to acknowledge her beauty. Okay, I'm just because I'm a black woman doesn't mean that I'm going to sit here and not acknowledge the beautiful blonde hair that somebody has. Or I'm not going to acknowledge the fiery red hair that somebody has. I collected Barbie dolls, okay, based on the beauty of what these dolls look like, okay. And I had a lot of white Barbie dolls, okay. So, and I think a lot of white, I'm going to go a little bit more into women's self-hatred issues and how women... You know, um, and I know that this was a bit racially motivated too, but it did have a lot to do with women feeling threatened by other women. Okay. And I'll go more into that in my, my video that I'm posting for Patreon, but no, I do not. Okay. I, I'm, I'm, I don't care. See, the thing is, all I care about is moving on. Okay. Whatever happened, happened. Okay. It does not prove a lot of things. I'm going to say, yeah, it does. Okay. But, and I did pose a few questions as to whether this is, their behavior is something that was encouraged through um, uh, social conditioning. You know, them believing in power to the point of where they had become obsessed with it. Okay. Um, or the other, the other um, thing could be, um, you know, that maybe they're demonic, maybe they're demonic origins, okay? There could be other possibilities to consider, okay? And, you know, obviously, I understand that my channel is very manipulated, and a lot of times, but I do also know that my channel is very fully viewed, okay? So, there's a lot of things, statistical information that I'm missing on this channel that I don't get, and plus, you know, because of people, some people feel intimidated to leave comments towards for me, okay? So I did pose a question, that question, you know, what do you think it is? Is it because of this or whatever? Um, my point is, is that if I, I don't discredit somebody just because they're white. I, I've never done that. I've never felt threatened by white women, okay? And I think some people think that if, in order for them to be beautiful, they have to intimidate and feel threatening to other women. Because this is this apparently seems to be the definition of a lot of women. This is why they get in competitions and all this other stuff. Like I said, I will finish more about this subject in my next video for Patreon. Um, but no, okay, I appreciate and I can acknowledge the beauty um, in all of them. If I had a modeling agency, um, uh, and I, I own a modeling agency, right? I'm going to have a mixed bag of models. I'm going to, I'm going to pick the models that I think are worthy of it. 
of, of beauty and this and of course you, you i'm not talking about like judging women on their standards of beauty or beauty okay but just because i'm a black person does not mean that i would exclude white people or uh or uh i don't acknowledge their beauty or their their the things that are unique about them or hold grudges uh, against them i think like for example my last boss who was an extremely beautiful woman right she was blonde haired right I don't, whether she was one by hair dye bleaching or whatever she was extremely a beautiful woman okay and younger than me okay so when I think about you know women comparing themselves young girls comparing themselves to older women or trying to compete and having these stupid shit going on I don't have time for it you know what I mean I will say um for every beautiful woman there's one that's 10 times more beautiful okay so when people seek beauty they're seeking to beautify themselves so that they can be at their highest level their highest level of beauty okay and you know when you're younger when i was younger i would look at people like you know jane kennedy and um beverly johnson and you know i would feel like man i wish i wish i could be as beautiful as them still to this day you know what i mean i wish i could be as beautiful as them i'm talking about you know they had like chiseled features and all this sort of stuff you know and i don't i feel like my my features aren't that you know, spectacular but what i do love is i do love clothes i do like present myself in the best way i possibly can i understand and i'm going to go into the whole female jealousy the idea, the idea of feeling my view okay of feeling like there's you know i need to compete for men i, I i'm going to go into that in my next video on patreon so if you want to check that out you know go ahead and click in the link so that you could become a member and see it if you're not already one okay but no i do not have an issue with white women i do not sit here and downgrade them i do not sit here and think or, or compete against them or feel whatever i, I don't I, I don't this is their issue that's their issue I, I I never even I don't care about it okay so also you know what I got an intuitive message about I get some iced tea in a second let me get some tea I am so thirsty running my mouth okay now a lot of you guys know that have been watching my videos know that the issue with Libra 14 and me making videos before I even knew that Libra 14 was involved in this I had touched on the subject of incest okay and there's a lot of people who are pro incest okay they may not come out and admit it but this is something that they do in their home okay so a lot of people were upset with me because i don't want to have be i i'm not incestuous or i do not promote it myself and i do not want to be a part of it okay the problem with it is is when people do have a certain level or they develop a certain level of respect for another person they ex they they feel disappointed when you don't adhere or believe in certain things that they do now i'm going to tell you that when it comes to sexual preferences that is a very um, sex in general okay sex in general is a very complex subject okay we have our sexual desires and our sexual needs based on so many different things okay for so many different things okay and when it comes to um uh uh some situations when it comes to incest i don't condone incest when it's an adult with a minor and i i've, I've explained it before but I'm going to give you my reasons why and to challenge that or put somebody in a situation where you're trying to prove that incest is okay especially when it comes to a work issue that is sexual harassment okay just like when a girl is kissing a guy and she pushes him away and says that's enough okay and he continually tries to press the issue getting forceful with her trying to take off her clothes he has crossed those boundaries okay and this is something that is a form of sexual harassment and i would classify it as rape at that point okay because she said no drop it okay now some people you know i I've, I've gotten some messages there's some people that i used to know who grew up in incestuous homes and they have normalized it and you know what if you have are comfortable with it and that and you you don't mind that, that that happened to you or you know or maybe i don't understand those sort of relationships and that's 
I, I don't really know much else to say about it. All I'm saying is, but if some people do not like that, like, for example, my love for my father was 100% just like, um, it was non-sexual. Okay. What I loved about him was his playful imagination. I loved his smile. Okay. His smile, his eyes always lit up with his face. Okay. So it was always genuine. This is how I know that my father loved me. Okay. He was a sincere person. I loved the fact that, you know, he would hold me and cuddle me and kiss me on the cheek, but there was never any sort of sexual, um, uh, uh relationship with me and my father, even though we were soulmates. Okay. We were soulmates based on a emotional an intellectual level okay somewhere down the line i have felt violated by predators okay and i do i did mention me having some issues with a family member in one of my videos if, if something feels violated, if you're not turned on by that other person okay here's the thing paint it okay let's visualize this scenario okay not everybody is going to be attracted to you for whatever reason. Okay. So in the, in, in, in situations where we're talking about child molestation, um, it, a little girl, like for example, let's just say my father did want to be like that with me. He wanted to have like a sexual relationship. This is all like, you know, these what if scenarios. Okay. I feel safe with my father. Okay. And if he was to start something like that, I, because I don't have those, I'm not attracted to my father that way. I've never been attracted to my father that way. There was nothing about my father that made me want to be touched by him in the, any of those ways. Okay. I would feel violated and it would make me, that's just how I am. This is how I am. And I'm not the only one. This is one of the reasons why a lot of kids report their, their parents touching them because they do not have a sexual attraction to their parent. They don't, they feel violated. They don't like it. Okay. And yet a lot of times because the parents are the parents, they, they're paying the bills and they will might put pressure on the kid to do it or, and the kid doesn't have, feel like they don't have a voice. Okay. And so at that point, it's a violation of their body. You know what I mean? And it, 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 it can, you know, it's, it's a complex, um, subject. Okay. If something, and I do get the feeling, like I said, there's a lot of people who were raised in these sort of families and they're comfortable with it. They might even have a relationship with their parents to this very day. Okay. But for me, I don't feel sexual attraction to anybody like that. Okay. There are certain people in the past where in my growing up. Yeah. That I, I would say, of course, I felt a sexual, sexual attraction to, to, you know what I mean? I'll mind you, I am not the kind of person that lets sex rule me. Like, I, you know what I mean? But there are certain people that I found like I, I would be attracted to. My father was never one of them. And that goes for anyone else in my family. Okay. And if that is the case, you know, it should be respected. Okay. The kid feels icky. They feel that, and they in turn, sometimes kids, when they're molested, not only do they feel icky, it internalizes, they internalize that and start hating themselves. Okay. Cause they have to endure something that they, they, they feel like they dread every single time and they don't have the power to do anything about it except for report it to another adult. And hopefully that adult will, will follow through. Okay. And, you know, it does shock me that people wanted to retaliate against me. And I do think that Libra 14 might have been that way. One of those people, because I do know that Libra 14 was in a relationship or was with his, with his daughter. And he knew how I felt about my experience with being violated when I was younger and how I didn't like it. So the very fact that he would take action to try to pursue me, knowing that I didn't like it, it feels very rapey to me. And I'm sorry if people, people like, you know, um, certain companies that rejected me and didn't want me um, on their social media platform also felt like that because this is something that they're used to and they feel as though, um, you know, I should change my mind. Every situation is different. Okay. If people enjoyed their experience with, 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 with their incestuous experience and this is, it's normal to them, they do not feel violated. They don't feel icky. I don't have anything to say about it. Okay. I, there, I don't have anything to say other than that's your preference. Okay. 
I'm like, I'm not the kind of person that feels that way. The kind of people that I feel sexual attraction to, and I'm just going to go and touch on this very, very quick, very quickly. Has, you know, when I'm looking back on the years for people, men that I were, I was attracted to, I was attracted to so many different kinds of men. I can't really pinpoint personality. It's just a magnetic draw that a person feels at certain times. And it's for some whatever reason. It could be that I was attracted to their masculinity. And in another person, it could have been the fact that I felt that they're, they're, they're um, being uh, uh, able to get in touch with their soft side was appealing to me. It could have been the fact that, okay, I think it's so cute when men eat hamburgers and they have like like a little food on their mouth. Seriously, I, I have had my crushes based on silly shit like that, okay? Whatever. <laughs> okay, but that is... If I feel a sexual attraction to somebody, then there's something in them that makes that person, you know, I, it draws me to them. Okay. Love does not always have to be pre expressed through sex. My love for my father was something pure, innocent, whatever. Okay. And I, I prefer pure, innocent love more than any, anything else. Why? Because it doesn't ask anything of me. You know what I mean? And I'm not asking anything of, of my father other than just keep being you and spend time with me and that's what i loved okay and um and whatever um but anyway i it kind of shocks me that people you know that there's a lot of people who are pro incest even at the age of uh the child being a minor okay and this is one of the things i want to tell you when you're when you're a victim of gang stalking you get hated on for so many different reasons like i said you'll talk you'll talk about oh i like you know this particular thing and then somebody will have to sit here and prove why you should like something else okay um it's not my responsibility to promote your views and you have the right to live your life and i'm not going to penalize anybody for any having any sort of views that differ than mine okay but this is what I'm trying to talk about. You know, it's like there's certain things that um, <laughs> there's certain things that are, are based on personal preference. OK, and in my case and in every case is different. Like I said, if, if you don't feel violated, if you feel like you can fully function in society, if, if you liked the relationship that you had with your family, then, you know, then that's cool. OK, but in my case, I didn't like the people who were who touched me. I didn't enjoy it. I wasn't attracted to it. I felt violated. And you also have to take advantage. You also have to look at the person as a whole. Okay. Is the person a creep? Do they gross you out? Are they bullies? Do they do more than just touch you? Do they also force you to be touched by others? Are they prostituting you? Are they exposing you? Are they doing things that are just crossing the line? These sort of things you have to take in consideration. Okay. And, um, <clears throat> You know, like I said, it's not my responsibility to promote or live out views of other people, okay? And I do hope that, like everyone else that I'm trying to make peace with, we could just live in peace, okay? I'm never going to be attracted to anyone in my family. Not just the fact that it's not just even a matter of sexual attraction. It's the very fact that they would allow me to suffer like this and be in a program like this from the, from the very beginning, okay? There's nobody in the world that I'm willing to bend over backwards and accommodate like that. You know what I mean? So there's a little bit more to that that, that issue, um, <clears throat> you know, than just like right off the bat, you know, and getting angry with me because I don't believe in incest. That's not my thing, okay? That's not for me, okay? And like, you know, if, if for example, if I knew a neighbor, let's just say for example, I had a neighbor that, that were like brother and sister, somewhere within my vicinity, okay? And they were like an incestuous couple or something. If they said good morning to me, I would say good morning to them. You know what I mean? Um, that would not, that, that's not me. I, I would not exclude them or, or try to bully up on them or whatever. That's just, that's their business. That's what they do. I choose not to do it. Okay, and that's all. It's as simple as it gets. Okay, and before I go into the celebrity readings, I did want to say that, you know, child molestation is against the law. Um, and uh, for children who are engaged in sexual activity, um, 
under the age of 18, you know, if they do report you for um, violating them, they do have the right to do so. And usually kids get report um, their parents for sexual violations in the school system or, um, you know, to an adult that they, they feel as though they can trust. And, you know, um, like I said, it is illegal to have sex with a minor. Um, but like I said, if you are over the age of 18, that's your choice. And like I said, um, you know, the, the, the message that I got is that I was being persecuted for, um, I, I believe Libra 14 too, um, uh, was angry because he believed that it was okay to have sex with children. And he, I guess he didn't like the fact that I, um, I didn't, I wasn't gung-ho with that. So anyway, I'm going to start, I'm going to get into these celebrity readings. Okay, you know, um, my method of um, doing these readings for the celebrities, I, I pulled, I pulled papers. So I got um, a Scorpio 27 again, and it looks as though um, he is, in his mind he's basically thinking that i deserve to have good things happen to me and i you know i don't like to sound like oh you know i deserve to have good things happen to me but okay when you look about the, look at the situation i deserve things to at least be better okay um and i do hope that uh, that things are going to turn around for me um it's been very difficult um throughout this time and it's it, it's always very um very odd when I think about this and, you know last night I stayed up thinking about um just the weird part I mean I think the weirdest part of course is the the reincarnation you know I've always had an interest in reincarnation and um you know just being putting all this weird stuff together and me finding out this that I'm a clone and all these you know the, the whole thing okay um I do think that that I I deserve uh, you know, justice, and I deserve to live um, out the rest of my life with a certain level of contentment. You know, it's just been very difficult for me. So, um, you know, I'm keeping my fingers crossed, and I do get the feeling that things are turning around little by little. Um, also, the message I get from you is that uh, Libra 14 was very upset when he departed, and so were a lot of other people, and they got their karma. Um, you know, um, I, I don't I don't know what else to say about that 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 whole thing I will say um, when I think about Libra 14 I I do get disturbed I get very disturbed and I do think that he did collaborate with um, a lot of white women um, and I'm going to talk about you know um, the whole um, male attention and women and their self worth and then the 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 threat that they feel. And, you know, how my view is of, of all of that in my video on Patreon. But so I'm not going to go too much into it on this video. But I think that Libra 14 was a very um, uh, misguided person. And um, I do think that he was somebody who wanted people to think very well of him. I think he wanted respect. And I think that he wanted glory and he wanted to fit in because he felt. And the same, same sort of stuff, okay? that everybody wants okay whether we learned it through the school system or we learned it through our parents or we learned it whatever i understand we want to adjust and be feeling feel adjusted in society okay but um libra 14 to me was a very warped person you know what i mean and it is kind of sad when you have to um you have to look at people from a, a different uh a differently you know um I don't, I don't ever recall thinking when I was younger, like, you know, um, focusing on him that much. I mean, I knew that he was a singer of a band that I really, really liked. Okay. And I always thought well of him. It, the, the idea that this man was like a racist never crossed my mind. I never really thought about that kind of stuff when it related to entertainers or, or really anybody. I, I was just kind of going around my, uh, along and dealing with certain issues as they came along okay so it never really i never thought about it. but to find out that i was targeted by lever 14 and him he i think believe that my ex boss worked alongside of him with her husband and I, there was a bunch of other white women that i may i may not know per personally or may have not remember too well um but like i said this this is a, a very um 
a need to express some sort of power, okay? And I know people use the term white power a lot, okay? And when I think about white power, this is the kind of white power that I experience, okay? It's like infiltration, people thinking that they have the entitlement of thwarting people's plans or becoming business partners when you never ask them, throwing in their two cents when nobody, you know, I, I don't recall asking for their help, you know what I mean? White power is the need for domination. And I call it the sickness. The sickness can be experienced by everyone. That's why when I posed that question a couple of days ago, is it because of indoctrination? Do we want power, this perceived uh, power that really to me, when I look at this power, it just kind of, it doesn't amount to anything. Okay, and what I mean by that is, okay, other than what what is it that people really, what do they think they were obtaining when they seek this power, okay? And I'm going to go into this more on my video. Right now, I'm just acknowledging the injustice and kind of briefly touching on what fueled his mentality to behave this way. I do know, you know, just kind of summarizing it, is that these white women felt competitive towards me because I look younger than my age. Number two, a lot of white people who are racist um, feel as though black people and other people of, of other colors do not have the right to love themselves, okay? And that by exercising white power, they are in turn trying to stamp out any plans, any goals of a person of color through illegal means, such as like, for example, Libra 14 being a business partner that nobody asked for, or, you know, them doing these sort of underground things and do it in a way where they actually feel entitled to do so because of them believing in this white power. This is what it is, okay? Now, this white power is not legal. This white power is illegal, okay? Because nobody has the right to do that sort of stuff, okay? But what they do, is their white power that they believe in is based on certain old ideas that, that were promoted by, you know, the Nazis and of course the Ku Klux Klan. Okay, and which under the guidelines of the law is a form of terrorism, okay? And this is the kind of person that Libra 14 was. Honest and truthfully, like I said, had I understood this as a teenager, it kind of would, I, I would have been really sad to me to have to throw away all his albums, okay? Because I was, I, I really loved artists that could capture the moment, express certain things, whatever. And, but, you know, as you get older, you start to realize not everybody is the music. They are not, you know, when I'm talking about some, some people, what I call true artists, okay? Their music is an expression of who they are and they live it, they feel it, they breathe it. This is who they are. They are artists, 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 okay? And their music is them, okay? And I understand not everybody is that. Some people are just the good looking guy with a good voice and that's why they sing the song. They're not necessarily about the lifestyle that they're singing about or they don't even experience the emotions that they sing about. They are just the guy who has the right voice, period. Okay, so I don't really give a fuck about um, Libra 14, but it's good that I found out that what he was, but it's also kind of sad because I don't like having to think negatively about people. I, I don't, you know what I mean? It, it's certain, having positive feelings, even though it's not actual love love, you have to have, you have to go through life with having positive feelings and having something to care about. Okay, like, so the warm, small amounts of, you know, uh, positive feelings that you feel towards whatever, like your stuffed animals or whatever, those are the things that get you by. And some of these celebrities were the warm feelings that helped get me through it, okay? Unfortunately, sometimes throughout life, we have to purge people and things out of our life that cause us emotional distress, okay? So now I don't listen to his music anymore. Uh, so on, um, and as far as him, he, he deserved what he got. And so did everyone else who, who, who jumped on the bandwagon, thinking that they had a sense of entitlement, knowing they knew good and well what they were doing was wrong. I had stated it before. They were obsessed with me. They watched all my videos. They knew legally it was wrong. 
they knew um, even if they were using it as a religious excuse they knew that it was wrong okay because I had my bases covered okay so um, I, I don't really care what happens to them um, but I, I will not um, I will not um, you know curse or feel as though they, sh they don't have the right to transition into a um, another life or whatever I'm not I don't sit here and like curse people on that level but I will make sure that if somebody is going to obstruct try to obstruct me or mess, mess with my life I have the right to protect myself so you know um, like I said you know they got what they deserve and no I don't feel sorry for them but I will say for the girl um, the beautiful girl who who, who, who lost her, her mind that is sad though it is sad when people have everything um, to have a good life and they just get so greedy and they want more and the sad part about it is there is nothing more there, there is nothing more okay so anyway um, also I think that I get the feeling that you watch my spirit creaser um, video and that um, you thought it was pretty good so that's cool um, I'm glad that um, you watch my videos and then you know I'm getting a mixed bag thing on this okay like um, people like my celebrity readings so they're encouraging me um, to stay on this particular channel and then I get uh, readings from people who think that I should um, have my other uh, an, another one now I know that my my channel is viewable by um, in search engines and stuff like that but there is a lot of manipulation in the channel and um, it, it's hard it, I don't know if they manipulate just the, the viewer numbers because if you can google my name and I pop up obviously and I get the feeling that a lot of people watch him okay but my but the, the numbering system is not really reflecting that okay and they do this um, I do believe that Libra 14 as well as the people on top of the pyramid had something to do with that okay um, I think that it was mainly because they were um, you know the whole com competitive thing all this stuff um, I don't know I'm thinking about maybe having another channel I it's not a top priority really at this point um, also yeah um, you you also acknowledge the fact that no one really knows the system or history of the country and I'm, I'm referring not just to this country but also the country that you live in people don't people listen to this stuff these lessons in school and it goes in one ear and out the other okay so when when people were talking about this religious stuff here in this country um, when I realized I was being targeted you know based on religion this is one of the reasons why I started talking about um, you know laws and I also talked about you know examples on, on how Jesus handled people who did not choose to be one of his followers okay and um, you know Jesus had a very relaxed view on it like you either listen to his message or he just strolled along it, he's, he wasn't going to sit here and put up an argument um, try to manipulate you or anything like that this is it he presented the, the quote unquote word and you accepted it or you didn't right um, this these attempts to like you know um, bully up on another person and the very fact that these important people got involved in it it's shocking okay especially on both sides whether you live in the UK or you live here in the United States because there are laws in the books that that clearly define freedoms of religion right so how is it that people uh, forget these things well there's a lot of ignorance and there's a lot of autocratic behavior that I've mentioned before okay a good example of this is like when I was younger I worked <laughs> I was working at um, my first job at, at Edwards Air Force Base I would go to like Burger King on my lunch break okay now mind you the, the choices at Edwards Air Force Base to eat lunch were like pretty pretty rare it was, it was a, you didn't get much of a selection okay <clears throat> so you best believe like when lunchtime rolled around Burger King was like really busy there were other places to eat but Burger King was like the only fast food place at that time <clears throat> so there was a manager of the Burger King there and when I think about autocratic autocratic is basically when you function and work in a way that is based on the your own goals and you're only considering your goals your beliefs your your way of living things are all going to be your way okay but in this case on a micro level this is the manager 
of a restaurant, okay? And she liked to degrade and bully a lot of her employees, okay? And I remember I would go there on my lunch break and some of the employees, I don't know, maybe they must have recognized who I was, but they would sit and make like contact, um, contact with me and they would tell me about them being sad. And yeah, I mean, I kind of befriended this Filipino girl and she was telling me how um, her, her manager was making her sad how she would bully them and, and all this other stuff. And it, it really like, cause I understood employment laws. I found this very fascinating. But the thing is, is that she was going outside of her, um, the rules within the company, okay? She knew good and well that she's supposed to treat each and every employee equally, okay? She knows that she's supposed to, her main function is to monitor, make sure, you know, like the food is ready, keep it at a certain temperature it is not her responsibility to use employees as her form of entertainment or her frustration bag every time she felt bad about herself she could sit here and pick on somebody well they ended up you know uh reporting her to upper management and she did get her just desserts okay but my point is you've all seen people who go into um you know, like organizations, work or organizations that, and, and they kind of, they know they've been trained on sexual harassment. They know good and well, you're not supposed to treat minority uh, employees any differently than anybody else, but they do it because they have their own secret. They want to have the company their way. Okay. They, they have, they might belong to a secret organization outside of their job and now they're bringing in their politics and all this other stuff, okay? And now they're using the company in a way to promote their, their views, okay? So that's autocratic. And in the example of me talking about the Burger King manager, that's on a micro level. Now we also have people in positions of power who uh, I would call on the mac macro level, right? Who do the same thing, okay? They might feel as though, all women, they just think if you're a woman, you belong in the kitchen, in the bedroom. That's where you belong. You belong in the kitchen or the bedroom, regardless of, they're not taking into consideration, you know, your need for safety, your history, your background, your background that specifically emphasizes abuse. Okay. There's all kinds of reasons why women don't get married. Okay. And because they are autocratic based off of their idea of what domination, some men, some people think that men should dominate regardless. Okay. Men should be the head of the household or whatever. We want men to do, to, to be in, in charge of this. Okay. People have, people have, uh, our special exceptions. Okay. In this, my case, I know the important people who got involved in it. And of course these sort of like involvements involve, um, it maybe, uh, benefit them. Okay. But, and so they do a lot of things that are crooked. They do a lot of things that are illegal. They do a lot of things that are immoral. And it's all autocratic. Meaning it's all something that serve, serves them and it does not help anybody on the level, the lower level, which is their responsibility to make sure that the lives of the people work and function in a way that is safe and where the people feel comfortably and satisfied. This is, this is how you be, a, you're a leader. You're a leader when you're able to help that along, okay? Because if you have a society that flows well in contentment and peace, okay? And I know there's always going to be issues that are going to like, you know, flare up from time to time, okay? But you want to make sure that you're not the person who's promoting that, okay? You have to be fair, you have to be just, and you have to understand certain things and how, what kind of guidelines to operate in. And unfortunately... This is a big violation, okay? I'm not gonna go too deeply into it. What else, do I have any other messages for you? Nope, that's it, but you keep popping up. So I think we're meant to um, be friends, maybe, hopefully. <laughs> Next person. Oh, okay, um, I had a little bit of problem recording this. This message is for Taurus 29. Female, I did a reading for you a few days ago. And I'm back to do another one. It looks like I pulled your your paper this morning. Um, and it's kind of weird because I have a, quite a lot of different people in my bag. So when I like keep pulling different people, it's kind of a trip. Anyway, I had to close the window because I had to close the window, but start all over again with this recording because I, I got interrupted. So um, 
the message I get from you is that the Swan Song Manifesto logo is liked and accepted for what it is. Okay. And like I said, it's nothing great. I'm admitting it's nothing great. It's nothing, you know, that people sit here, sit here and talk about mainly other than to analyze it and come to the conclusion that the reason why something so basic would be created is because I don't have those kind of artistic skills. But um, I'm glad that people think that it's acceptable, at least for now. I mean, like, you know, um, I would hope that I have a fully functional Patreon channel to where people can say, hey, you know, um, <clears throat> maybe it could be a little bit better. Also, you know, it'd be nice if I had my money from Patreon so that I could maybe hire somebody who can actually create a better one for me. Um, so, and you see that in the future that um, you expect me to be going out and socializing and meeting other people. And I hope so. I want to get to that point. Like I said, everything right now is contingent upon me um, getting things straightened out and ow, ow, I'm trying to stretch my legs, um, making a living. So, um, but yeah, I do. I mean, um, I want people to understand that, yes, I do like to have parties, but I also like being alone. Now, I'm a person who functions better alone. I don't really feel comfortable with people like all the time, back to back, over and over and over again. But I do remember like in the 90s where like people would hang out at my house. I enjoyed having company. I mean, I, they could have been perps, okay, but what I did like was, you know, I liked sitting around listening to music, watching movies, making comments about stupid movies, people going in my kitchen. I, I like my house to be, like, fully open. You know what I mean? I don't mind people walking in and making stuff out of the refrigerator. That, that's kind of cool, right? But, um, and I do, it's a very relaxed environment when people are hanging out with me. But there's times where, like, you know, I remember in the past where I had to, like, literally tell people, okay, you need to go home. Because, you know, and that's why I've learned how to set boundaries. Like, for example, if I throw a party or have people over, I, I will let them know, okay, from like 4 to like 6, 6.30 or whatever. And then like 6.25, people need to start like making plans to pick up and go. It's not because I'm being a bitch. It's just because I care about people and, and preserving my friendships to where I understand what what can cause people to start resenting other people. You know what I mean? And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I want to say, you know, it's like people do things to other people and then they don't understand what caused the conflict. And I'm not saying that you're like this, but since I'm on this conversation, I'm just kind of talking about it. But, you know, um, you know, I know that in the past, you know, people liked hanging out in my house so much that there were times where I had to kick people out of my house. You know what I mean? <laughs> and like, it's time to go. So, um, but yeah, I, I, I do enjoy, um, having company. I do enjoy, you know, making food for people. I do enjoy when people cook food in my house, you know, it's one of the reasons why I find the whole food magic thing really exciting. And if you think that this isn't my future, then you must obviously see from your end. Because I can't only, I can't see things from my end. I mean, like, you know other celebrities, you know important people. All I, I, all I can do is, you know, do, do my meditations and tap information from people when I feel like something is going on or I, I have a, I, I have a question or sometimes the downloads come but like you are in the thick of it you know people you know more than, than I do I don't know a lot of these people or have a history with these people as a matter of fact some of these people I've just been introduced to whether you know through Instagram or whatever but anyway that's cool that you think that. Anyway, and I have been thinking about contest, you know, and I wanted to announce a contest on this particular video. I'm trying to decide whether or not I should because, you know, um, this is kind of a big contest that I think it is. And I, I get the feeling throughout my readings is that, you know, I'm supposed to be able to get this issue cleared up in time for my contest. And I do want my contest. So I don't know what's going on over there right now. I'm, I'm always kind of like kind of up in the air and because of me not being um this the autonomous per I, mean, I am autonomous but I, I know that I've had people who involve themselves who ended up creating problems and this is one of the reasons why I'm talking about me always feeling like I'm more excited doing things on my own unless of course I want a collaboration which I do want a collaboration with a lot of these people and including you um but this is where I'm at right now you know what I mean so um you know I'm trying to get um, people to take interest in their hobbies that they have already and also see like the magic value in what they do 
And um, I, I am not going to tell you what this idea for this particular contest is, but it's kind of a cool thing. And I'm also encouraging people to be inventive as well, you know, because this particular item that I want made, I don't believe it exists yet, but I'm calling on certain people to invent it. Um, the next thing I got is the message is that, that um, a lot of people who got involved in my um, my targeting, and especially I, I suspect um, Labor 14, he may have had some sort of views on women being submissive to men. And I understand that a lot of people use like things like religion to enforce that. Okay. And like I said, we do have freedom of religion. I didn't sign up for anything like that. Um, I, I remember seeing my sister, Tanya, be in a relationship like that. And I remember you know, watching her, at, you know, debate whether or not she could turn off the air conditioner. Um, this, this, I'm already getting pissed off about this because she was making more money than her husband was at the time. And she was basically, you know, be, uh, being told that she couldn't turn on the air conditioner higher than what it was. And she's the one who's bringing home the money. Okay. Um, I understand there's a lot of men who, who, um, use religion as an excuse to abuse their women. Okay. So we have this issue about what the law says and basically what their religion says. Now, according to like the Bible, the men is the head of the household. Okay. They are the head of the household and they're supposed to be able to, you know, uh, instruct their families lovingly and that sort of stuff. And a lot of men use this thing about being in the head of the household as an excuse to abuse and exploit women. Okay. In the case of Libra 14, if I was dumb enough to fall for his trick and I had to end up, end up being his wife, he would be dead, mind you. But, well, he, never mind. But anyway, um, he, uh, th that to me, he was trying to put me in a situ situation where I, I would be in subordination to him because I didn't have any choice. The way he had it arranged was he's blocking me from the nine to five jobs. He's blocking me on social media. So he's trapping me to be around him, to be around whatever. I have no other option to be with anybody else, okay? So I would end up married to him, being married to him, and he would make my life a living hell and be fucking his daughter in my house, my fucking house. I don't think so, okay? <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Um, I understand a lot of people come from that old fashioned way of thinking and, um, you know, uh, it's up to a woman to, to, I mean, it's up to a person when they get married to talk about getting married. You know, if this is the kind of structure, um, that, uh, a woman wants agrees to, then that's, then that's fine. Okay. But people need to know what they're getting involved in. And I don't think my sister realized how, um, how strict her husband could be. Um, and how he was going to abuse her, you know what I mean? But whatever, it, it should be, you know, she should be consenting to that sort of relationship and it should be agreed upon. It's not something that he, he was trying to force me into something that I would have never, never wanted. Um, so anyway, nobody really cares about what happened to Libra 14. So they were willing to use Libra 14 in this little ploy. But now that, you know, what happened to Libra 14, it's almost like, this is what I'm saying about the herd mentality and how sick and destructive it is. Okay. He was, he was a part of it at first and now nobody cares about it. Isn't this crazy? Let that be a lesson to people, right? Okay, so anyway, um, yeah, I definitely will follow up. I think I do follow you already on Instagram. If I don't, um, I will start following you. I do want to talk to you in the future. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to go on to the next um, reading. Oh, wow, that really sucks. Okay, so I was sitting here talking for quite a long period of time, and guess what? I didn't even record a darn thing. So anyway, um, this message is for the pyramid peeps. Now, I'm calling you pyramid peeps. You know who you are. You're the guys at the top of the pyramid over in England, blah, 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 blah. We've been trying to be discreet about this, but we know at this point it's just kind of a joke. But still, I'm calling you the pyramid peeps. Also, peeps is an abbreviation for people, okay? So anyway. Uh, the messages that I was uh, kind of going over was the fact that, um, well, I'm going to have to go back and go backwards now um, because I didn't record everything at the same time. I hate backtracking, but that was my own fault. Apparently, my I'm sitting Indian style in front of my computer, and um, 
my toe must have touched the keyboard and uh, that's just the way it is okay so the message i got from you was that my um, swan song manifesto is accepted um as to leave my mark and um you know i i was going into this whole spiel about um employers and um infiltration and how uh privileged people um don't think about uh you know people who are not uh privileged you know people who work the working people um such as myself and i did mention that yes i understand that i do have royal ancestry um from ethiopia but i don't live like european um royalty i live like you know a regular commoner and that's just the way that things are i mean there's a lot of people who have royal ancestry but they live as commoners okay and yes commoners are expected to find their own job according to what the law says now there have always been professional networks and professional networks are completely fine i've already gone all over it um about you know um how the laws are on our side how the laws uh do talk about things like human trafficking and, and stuff like that it's just the fact that a lot of people are ignorant of them um so um the fact that the thing is is that what i'm dealing with is a lot of entitlement people who 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 are in positions of um privilege who've never had to maybe even you know fill an application or maybe someone who's never struggled before okay and you think so poorly and so lowly of people who do is that you think of them as inanimate objects who don't you don't think about whether this person likes their job or they're even fit for it you just find them a job okay um I, that's not the best way of handling things but anyway um and this is too bad that my first recording got messed up because I really said a mouthful and I really kind of forgot a lot about the things I said already. This is like when, when I record stuff, it's, it's really, really good. At least I try to get the best stuff on there, but it's one of those shitty things that happen. I just messed up on the, um, on the recording. Okay. Now I did get a positive message that I do believe that Patreon views my um, content as good and they look at it as a very high level of entertainment. I don't, I have not heard anything from Patreon. The last time I sent them an email was like about uh, maybe a week, two weeks, maybe three, even three weeks. It's been a while. I don't remember the last time I posted my videos. I think it might've been the, the first or second week of May and I am going to be posting. I just created finished making another video it's a food magic video and now i'm making working on a video um that i'm going to be uh, once i finish it i'm going to be uploading both of those videos i had then i will be seeing what's going on with patreon doing my checkup it's been very frustrating this whole issue with patreon but i do get the feeling that they view my um, content is good and i'm very glad about that um and uh, i do want to i'm when I, when I communicate with Patreon, I do so in a way where I, um, I want, I, I kind of want them to let them know that I'm dealing with targeting. Okay. But I don't want to be confrontational either. Okay. So just to try to keep things peaceful with me and Patreon, I just want them to kind of let me know if they're having problems with my account, let me know just kind of let me know they don't have to go in deep into it but if they're sludging behind or something or something's not moving fast enough just let me know because i don't want to sit here and keep making videos about me worrying about this this and this and that everything okay um that's all i want to say about patreon i want to keep a relationship with patreon i look at me as having a business relationship with patreon because my my content is being on their is on their um their website so um i'm very glad that they um they 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 look at my work as outstanding that's great um anyway i get the message that you like the um the enemies and obstacles um video and uh, in the first video that i made that i had to um that i accidentally deleted i was like basically kind of saying some stuff that kind of points to the fact that i do look at you guys as extremely narcissistic meaning like you know the kind of pain that you cause your family i'm not saying because you weren't around at that time okay but your family your line caused me as prince alamehu and then coming back to deal with you guys again have caused me a lot of problems now i get the feeling that enemies and obstacles was one of the videos that you guys really enjoyed and my question is why did you enjoy it do you take a slick pleasure in knowing that you cause suffering on people or do you find it interesting that you can use divination methods to get down to the heart of things okay and see i the thought the point of it is i don't every my experience with you guys have been so negative that it's very hard for me to think 
anything other than negative stuff about you guys. But you have to understand where I'm coming from, from my point of view, okay? It's completely understandable that I'm going to feel the way that I feel, okay? But um, the, the Enemies and Obstacles video was created to help people understand the kind of world that we live in. And in order for people to get to their goals, they need to be able to identify what is getting, what's in the way before they can actually start, you know, working towards manifestation goals. Okay. So I recommend that if people have a goal in mind, they need to do a reading first. Okay. Um, to find out what that obstacle is. And once they identify that obstacle and pinpoint it, then that can either be resolved by maybe a simple conversation with that person. Sometimes it might end up being having to take a person to court. Sometimes it might have to mean um, ending relationships with your family, whatever that obstacle is so that they can move on. Okay. So I don't know the reasons why you like that video. Okay. But I do get the feeling that the whole issue relating to poor CB Braganza is very sad to me that he felt as he had to do what he did. Okay. And mind you, in this vessel that I'm in right now, there were times where I have considered that because mainly of the misery that you caused to other people. Okay. And I'm just being outright in front about it. I did talk about being autocratic a little bit earlier in this video. In this case, I do believe that you are an autocratic group of people and it is not me trying to create a fight. I'm just basically saying is, is that, um, you know, I understand that like things like witchcraft, for example, have been legal in your country for a very long time. And yet I was being like bullied over the religious issue here in this country and your country as well as um, here in the United States by the leaders of this country. Now, this is groups of people getting together being what? Autocratic, doing things that they feel personally, that they like and not thinking about the common, <laughs> the common good of everyone else. You know what I mean? Uh, it was a nightmare. Anyway, but let, us, let this be a lesson. Also, I know that you attacked my, um, my appearance. Um, I know that it, part of your hate campaign against me was telling people that I was a man in my previous life and therefore I must be some sort of freak in nature that doesn't deserve any sort of respect. And this is how you you got through why getting this large support system while you were basically destroying my life. Okay, um, we've all processed. You could have very well been one of your ancestors, the very same ancestor that I communicated with. I don't know if you are or not, okay? But you could very well be a reincarnation of the person who I had a relationship with in my previous life. And I'm just letting you know how weird and flip flop this could be. I'm not saying you are, I'm just saying is this is how it could be. Okay. But yeah, I mean, um, I'm a girl in this life. Okay. A fully functional girl. I have like, I'm not try trying to get personal with you. Okay. But since we're like talking, I have like female genitalia that was able to produce an offspring. Okay. Not by artificial means. I was able to do it all on my own. I am 100% in this vessel a female. Period. Okay. And it, flop, it can flop around with people. I think you were reaching for, for or grasping for straws because you didn't want to tell people that or at least the originator of this, because I don't know if that all of this came out directly from your mouth, but you certainly were somebody who was supporting it, promoting it. Okay. It could have been Joseph Mengele who was like, Hey, she came out and who's to say Joseph Mengele could have constructed it so that I deliberately came out to be a female. Okay. But I do know that flip flopping around between the sexes is a, um, is a, is a, just a regular part of the reincarnation process, whether you're cloned or your, um, what do you call it, come out of natural birth, right? Because I've seen like so many examples of like, for example, this last one I talked about in the video where this little black, or this little white boy was talking about how he was a black female. Now, not only did he change uh, sexes, he changed races. However, that works, whatever, okay? A vessel is our vessel. But I'm a woman. And I enjoy who I am. I love being a woman. I would, and you know, I, I don't know if I want to come back to earth or not. You know, I'll figure that out whenever. Okay. Cause I will tell you it's pretty crappy down here. Okay. But one of the things I do enjoy, I love my clothes. 
I love my makeup. I love being a girl. I love, I focus my entire world in my feminine world. I'm a, fe I'm a girl. I'm a girly girl. Okay. Um, and I find it offensive that people would actually debate what it is and how I'm supposed to act, what I'm supposed to think, what I'm supposed to look, how I'm supposed to present myself. You know, the kind of person that, that would do that is an autocratic narcissistic person. No offense, but that's what you guys are over there over in England and over here in the United States. Okay. Two power structures that are walking and operating autocratically. The last message I have is that um, I am totally visible on social media and I do understand that I know my numbers are skewed. I understand that you wanted to discourage me from we're doing my work in the occult. I understand that you have an interest in the occult. I personally will say, even though you and I aren't the best of friends, that I do commend you. I commend anybody who has an interest in the very things that are unseen, but play such a huge role in the way that we live our life. Okay, so anybody who pursues the occult, to me, I commend, right? But the occult, to me, is something that should be debated, just like God shouldn't be debated any other sort of things. And I certainly do not have what I, I, I have the right to talk about food magic and how I work magic and how I perform magic. But I, but magic is something that is open. People, anybody can talk about it. Anybody can write about it. Anybody can talk about God. Anybody can talk about how they like handles anybody. Now, if you were to like record and, 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 and take my words word from word and put it into your work, that's something different. Okay. But I mean, I, 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 I it, you, it, you can't put a patent or a copyright on things like God and stuff like, that, okay. So, you know, if this is your interest, I'm not in, com in competition. I don't, and I don't want to compete with you. And the very fact that, you know, I don't want to go into it. Okay. Really? I don't, but, um, I, I don't not interested in competing with you at all. Okay. So I do understand that my numbers are skewed and you've caused a lot of damage and slowed me down when it comes to, um, communicating with people and getting accurate numbers. Okay. You're messing with my data. Okay. And data is important when you're trying to grow, whether you're trying to use it for business purposes or even social purposes. You know what I mean? Like you act as if I have no right to have any fucking friends other than the monster hellhole, Libra 14 and all these other monsters that you decided to select for me. And these people are nothing but evil people. Okay. I don't have anyone that I care about in my life because you have struck that because you think that I don't have the right to have any sort of thing because you are an overprivileged person. This is not, this is me telling you the truth. Okay. So if you care about being a better person, then maybe that should mean something to you. Also, I did want to say about being a leader. Um, you know, um, I, I was talking about, you know, I don't have an interest in politics. And the reason why is because I don't believe that the political um, platform is uh, appreciative of people who really want to bring any structure or order. It seems as though just like the bullshit that goes on in the workplace, when you try to tell people the kind of problems that they cause, you end up being the target. You end up being the bad person who's ruining everybody's fun. Well, the thing is, this is not about being fun. You're responsible for people's lives. Okay. Now I was thinking that if I was a leader, my little what if scenarios, if I was a leader, what, what would I be thinking if I had passed away and I'm looking down from the heavens on the earth? And what do I want people to be able to say in order to be a good leader? Is that I would want people to say that when Maria Gordon was in office, there were plenty of the economy worked well. The, re the economy worked well. I want to say that it flourished, okay? I would hope that people could say that it flourished. I would hope that people would say that people were truly educated, demonstrable in the education, that Maria brought great changes in the education system. I would want to, I would want to be able to say that I brought light into a, I lightened a darkened path for many individuals. This is what I, the sort of things that I would want to be said about me as a leader. And the idea of a good leader is to be immortal in the minds of many, meaning immortality is where like, you, you know, we, we can sit here and, and recall historical figures that lived centuries ago because of something outstanding that they've done. Okay. To make a difference in people's lives, 
in a positive way and understand not in an autocratic way but to be able to be counted upon to lead and guide not just people who look like you but a whole group of people okay understanding the diverse nature of people and this puts people puts you in the minds of people as someone who is really a good leader and somebody who made a difference and changed a life and the structure of something okay that's what I'd want somebody to say more immortality comes in different ways immortality comes through number one when I, I was thinking about the immortality thing okay like we were talking about immortals now going back to the Prince Alamehu thing really quick Prince Alamehu might have been an immortal he died at 95 he took himself out okay he ended up committing suicide but like I said that doesn't mean that he was immortal he might have ended up dying three or four years later okay but let's just say for example he could have lived continuously that there was no gap between me being Prince Alamehu Prince I mean C.B. Berganza and I continue to live even up to this day and age okay that would make me an obviously immortal some people look at the cloning process as making you immortal even though you die and you leave one vessel be, you know behind you get another vessel and get to be cloned and live again okay but some forms of immortality are how you get written and remembered by in history and the work that you did and the contributions that you made and how you bettered the lives of other people okay and that means a lot because there's a lot of suffering that goes down here okay so if you can bring any light to some people okay improve their processes and when you think about what as a leader I think it's so important to understand the average lifespan of man okay and built it based on that right people are the average lifespan of a person is 75 years old okay right now okay when you think about what happened in my life I'm 53 year right now and you better believe right now at this moment I care about every minute of my life and I want to make sure I'm not wasting even a second of it okay as a leader I want people to say that my life had meaning I brought meaning to people's lives okay that's what a leader is supposed to do well you are in charge of so many goddamn people okay so anyway that is the only reading that I have for these individuals now I'm going to go into my what if scenario because I was thinking earlier about what it would be like if I did if I if I had some sort of say of what goes on when it comes to this whole tragedy of stalking and the issue of the cyberbullying okay because it it gets to the point where I have to step away and start going through the what-if scenarios because so many people are literally you know um, their lives are being destroyed by what people think is just some sort of fun games okay so I'm coming back in the next slide now I had did a video about um, workplace stalking and how 79% uh, of stalking victims are um, are being attacked in the workplace okay and um, obviously employers play a huge role in this stalking program and first of all um, I, I kept thinking okay so what would employers do in in this you know hype Maria is always a hypothetical thinker so in my hypothetical world what would employers do to prevent this from happening or if they recognize that it is happening in their places of employment what are they going to do about it okay so the first thing I said um, listed would they be there should be serious penalties for workplace violations of harassment that violate civil rights okay what are civil rights civil rights are the right to have your own race I mean be a part of a race okay I have the right to be black okay I have the right to have a religion and I have the right to not have a religion okay um, also uh, civil rights would be relating to our marital status and I even listed family planning okay um, the reason why is because sometimes people end up losing their job because they have they decide to go off and have a baby okay which is their right okay civil rights or the laws that are, are written for us are supposed to be able to protect our way of our, our life okay how we live okay I have the right to be who I am these are just very basic outlines okay I have the right to be black I have the right to be a you know whatever religion I have the right to believe God to to be whatever I can I can imagine God being in the shape of a frog if I want to that's my right 
Okay, I have the right to be single and I have the right to be married. All right, so they need to understand the consequences, okay, of uh, what happens when you violate these rules. So if for, from an employer's, um, if you're an employer, what they should do or what would employers do if they, if I had some sort of control over it, they would be training their, their employees on things like human trafficking, gang stalking, and also letting their employees know that that will not be tolerated. Make sure that they understand the definition of what that is. And we're going to go into that in just a minute. And also be very steadfast when it comes to executing whatever kind of punishment that they that these employees need to get when that happens. The number two thing that I, um, uh, oh gosh, don't forget. Oh yeah. Okay, so I, I, I wrote for number two, don't participate in human trafficking activities and hire based on, hire based on the skill or the experience of their employees. Okay, um, you can't sit here and you, don't, you shouldn't expect human resources, okay, from an employee standpoint to do anything about your targeting prog program when they brought you into that place of employment under those circumstances in the first place. Okay. Once you start letting these employers know that, hey, I'm hip to what's going on. Something's going on behind the scenes. You know, they start doing, they start panicking and start trying to protect themselves. Okay. And mind you, human resources is there, there to protect the company. Okay. They're listening to your grievances, but at the end of the day, they're there to protect the company. Okay. So when these shady employers are doing this kind of shit, right? Um, you can't expect their human resources, uh, their human resources to do anything. All right, but so the point is, is for them to not participate in human trafficking activities in the first place, okay? And hire based on their skill and their experience, not because you're trying to get somebody married, not so because you're trying to keep somebody married, not because you want to cram down your that religion down somebody's throat. Number three, um, they should be proactive about bullying behavior. Um, severe abuse should be reported to certain agencies that have the ability to offer assistance to the victim and organizations that can limit the uh that can limit the perpetrator okay now i'm kind of referring to two different kinds of organizations here all right now um when it talks when i'm talking about being proactive about bullying behavior um there should be certain agencies okay so ideally like if, uh, if let's just say for example a manager is enacting this sort of bullying out on a person once that is identified and let's just say for example the, the the ideal setting is is that the employer didn't set themselves up to be in um to be trafficking somebody in the first place let's just say for example it's just you know there's a there's a manager much like the burger king manager that i described earlier okay an autocratic person who's sitting here taking their personal beliefs on men being in charge and a bullying woman they're bullying women they're bringing their religious views into it and they're also offending minorities you know just for fun on the side okay this is what they're doing okay so they're getting reported about but the main issue is that they're doing stalking behavior okay stalking uh bullying the uh, employee at the workplace and all this other stuff. Once they have enough information about this person doing it, whether they're retrieving this person's email or they find evidence that this person is exciting this sort of behavior, this is what I think they should do is that there should be certain end agencies that get involved. And the reason why is because this may not be just within your organization. This person could be not just be bullying that you need to find out did, is this person just bullying this person here in this organization this company or are they responsible for getting this outside of the organization okay now if you're doing this outside of the organization not just the workplace now we're talking about gang stalking and now we're talking about human trafficking so these particular agencies should be notified okay an agency that number one can offer big um, assistance to that victim and i'm not talking about big agencies that allow themselves to uh, be corrupt. They're, they're, they, like I said, they need to make sure that they adhere to certain rules and protocols. And if they don't, they need to be fired, okay? And there should be certain lists and registers that I should, I'm gonna be going into that, um, <clears throat> that mark people 
they literally make them pay a consequence for these sort of stupid react actions that they do okay so this particular organization like for example the department of human trafficking okay now there's certain chapters and they're in locations in different parts okay now this is where i think employers should be working with departments of human trafficking and this is where they i see where they should cut they should collide or they should like work together okay if a person is being it's been discovered that this person is dealing with human trafficking maybe they have uh, another employee that's being recruited to spy for a husband or whatever they need to be able and there's other offenses and they, they, this issues that are going on in the workplace they need to be able to bring another or outside organization there for the victim that they, they should show proof that they were aware of the human trafficking issue that's going on and to also provide uh, resources to the victim okay because the victim's going to need some resources if they're dealing with human trafficking that is a very scary thing okay so that particular thing and then also uh, uh what was it and victim organization that can limit the per perpetrator okay i want to talk about organizations that could possibly limit the perpetrator meaning like there should be um and i think i have some a slide that's going to go into that more like the limiting the perpetrator like once a person finds you, they have been determined that it's been determined that they have abused somebody possibly created an issue relating to human trafficking on the comp company computer okay meaning selling sending emails setting up job interviews posting fake job ads whatever that case is okay all that stuff that's illegal they should be put on some sort of thing where they're no longer um eligible for management jobs that's what i think okay because why are you constantly letting somebody in who, who knows that they're prone to being in that with that kind of behavior constantly be doing that now i'm not saying blacklist a person to where you're preventing them to, from finding employment because that's cruel okay and that's against the law okay but can somebody legally prevent somebody from doing a certain profession legally yeah they can but it has to go through the legal system first and these things should be handled like quickly to prevent these people from constantly doing this sort of stuff they should not have be able to have that sort of position ever again now the other thing i was going to say is ensure abuse does not reach oh yeah ensure the abuse does not reach the community level that yeah that's what i'm saying if that has reached the community level on the employer's time with their stupid emails talking about stalking people setting up fake job interviews talking to other companies and trying to get involved in this whole cabal thing the employer should not be responsible for the spread of these sort of uh, these sort of occurrences once it's been determined that this sort of activity is going on in the workplace there should be an agreement that there's going to be some confidentiality agreements need to take place meaning that you're not going to sit here and and create any more problems for the victim of this for this the only sort of reporting that you're going to be doing should be should be going on is the the person who created this violation who did this violation they do need to experience some sort of punishment even if it's something light even if it's even if if, if if it is taking away their management uh eligibility something okay so i'm going to go on to the next slide okay so going back to this was like i think that gang stalking activity should be outlined in company handbooks employees should be given instructions on exactly what stalking activities are define what they are from the very get-go and constant reminders of it like you know every meeting they need to talk about that okay and the reason why people like slip up and act like they they, they don't remember what the with the definition of sexual harassment is maybe it's because those trainings are from one year to another or whatever okay but maybe certain people need to reinstate things at every meeting at the end of the meeting just remind people hey you know what this is something that you know we it's all agreed upon this is this is this this is this is how we define stuck gang stalking this is how we define uh sexual uh, sexual harassment whatever whatever there should be more refresher courses or reminders throughout like the year okay because it might be another year before they hear this again okay and it needs to have some sort of proof that this has been talked about so there is no excuses 
They can't say they forgot. They can't say any of this. No, because we just talked about this every other week or every month that we get together or whatever. You sign this this time. You sign it that. There is no argument. And once this person's found guilty, get them out of your organization. It's just, it's just, get, it's just, it's just be as efficient about removing the offender as soon as possible. Now, okay, this kind of stalking is a federal offense. Okay, and what makes it a federal offense is any sort of um, activity, um, let me see, uh, that involves the internet, mail, or activities that cross state lines. Okay, um, and that could be through regular mail, activities that cross state lines, um, like, you know, setting some up, um, up for a job interview here in another state or spreading bullshit that's putting the target into a compromising position as part of some sort of organized crime issue and of course a lot of it comes from the internet okay defining stalking or cyber stalking under federal law that would be actions that make the target feel fearful of death or serious bodily injury to themselves their family pets or their loved ones okay when i'm talking about the issue of messing with my numbers and telling them, you know what, when you're doing this, because of what happened with my stalking in the workplace, you guys making me drive long distance for job interviews that were a waste of my time, being called in for job interviews just to fucking harass me, you made me feel like my life was threatened. When you're sitting here sitting, you know, making limitations on me um, and basically telling me I can either do this or I'm going to end up dead or without a job or means to survive, especially when I have the right to, this is what you did. You made me feel fearful of death or serious body injury. You made me feel threatened for myself as well, well as when I was dealing with bullying when I was raising my child. Okay. Meaning like I'm a parent. I have to take care of my, my kid. I don't appreciate being bullied. But that is basically what it is. The defining stalking or cyberbullying under these federal laws. That action that was taken against me falls under that, those guidelines. Number two causes emotional, severe emotional distress, such as shame, humiliation, grief, fear, anxiety, or embarrassment. Okay, now they, I know they like to do things to like put you in situations like telling people that I was a male before I was who I am now is basically trying to ruin my reputation. A person's reputation de determines their quality of life. Okay, so when people are basically causing you emotional distress, putting you in situations where they're making you feel uncomfortable, causing anxiety, trying to do things to embarrass you or whatever, well, even if those, and like, and I know this case, they were like the campaign smears that were going on about me that I had no aware of, you damaged my reputation. Okay, this is why it falls under the lines of uh, the cyber stalking. Okay, trying to destroy me as a person and causing the kind of emotional, the, the key words here are emotional distress. Number three, cyber stalking has the same definition, but it's conducted through electronic forms of communication. Like me getting emails like from indeed.com with fake ads on them, phone calls, social media, all of that sort of stuff. As you can, um, and in order to convict a per perpetrator, from these sort of stalking um, activities, okay, you have to have proof that the contact, that the conduct happened at least two times. So if you're somebody out there who's dealing with this sort of stuff, you need to keep track of your stuff, okay? Find out who's doing it. If if we lived in a, ro a world, okay, that I rule, okay, this all of this right here, these are the facts I'm telling you and defining the laws of what human trafficking and stalking all this stuff is. This is this is correct, okay. But as far as these agencies and stuff like that, you would think they'd have some sort of plan on how to handle this sort of stuff. Okay, I had received no fucking assistance from anybody because they were in on it. Okay. But this is these are the guidelines of it. And this is what um, what these people did, and this is the kind of caught the problem that they caused me. Okay, now when it comes to these agencies. Um, I, I'm like, what would, what should agencies do? Okay. So like, for example, agencies like the human uh, department of human trafficking, they should provide a safe shelter for their target somehow. Okay. Um, they should uphold confidentiality and they should, um, the, they should be prepared to assist somebody, uh, possibly 
help these people might even be able to get them an identity change depending on how what kind of level their targeting is if their targeting is what i call like white house level there's not really much they can do about it okay but if it's like the kind of level where it's just their family members messing with them it's just some old stupid uh you know uh, jealous people that was badgering them then they can do something about it figure something out to do with this person how help this person be able to start all over again because i'm going to tell you what once you get targeted your life is a goddamn nightmare it is a nightmare okay it's devastating beyond devastating and they're going to need it they should be i think anybody who has ever experienced this they deserve to have a fresh start number two the department of human trafficking should be in communication with law enforcement agencies this is ideal now i know that law enforcement is ignorant as hell i mean they're so beyond ignorant they don't even know the kind of they can't enforce a lot they're unaware of it right but this is we're talking about an ideal world the kind of world that it would be operating if i had control over it all right so human trafficking should be in communication with law enforcement agencies possibly have a list similar to the sex offender publication like you know how sex offenders are listed i think people who cause a sort of problems to people in the workplace there should be a list about them too okay that means it doesn't matter if it's an agency doesn't matter if it's a company and if it is a company if it was their manager their man they need they need to be there on there too they need it mike so-and-so needs to be listed on there as a uh what do you call it either a a uh it could um somebody who participates participated in human trafficking or somebody who um who uh participated in gang stalking or whatever okay now what, when i was talking about cyber cyber bullying that doesn't necessarily relate to human trafficking but it does cyber bullying oftentimes is a tactic that's used by human trafficking so i do want to keep these issues kind of separate okay number three um assist in keeping target employed Okay, like when I lost my job after telling people that I suspect that I was being targeted because I was being targeted by big wig people like the pyramid peeps, it went in one ear out the other. Okay, but that doesn't mean that what the pyramid pe peeps did were right. It was wrong and they shouldn't have done it regardless, especially when you think about the history of poor little Prince Alamejo, right? But still, okay, legally, um, I should not have been fired. Okay, um, the target employment needs to be protected when they identify themselves as being in a situation of being uh what do you call it a victim of human trafficking or stalking or something okay but unfortunately i was working for an employer who was on the side of the target the perpetrators okay so what happens to this is what i'm telling what happens to the victim their life gets destroyed that's bullshit Okay. The last thing I want to say about this one, this particular slide, is law enforcement should be trained on gang stalking, human trafficking, etc., and there should be swift penalty for people who do things. Now I know, like in the law system, when people do something, their cases could go on for years and years and years and years. If I was somebody who was in this as a, a, a position where I had to say, there, there's this not going on year and year and year and year and after year. Okay, you did something, and once it's identified that you're guilty, the, 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 the process of the law should already be put in place. Okay, there's no efficiency in this country. That's a problem. Okay. Now, just as I thought I was wrapping up this video, some more thoughts came to mind. And mind you, this is all, what, what is the word? Hypothetical, the what if scenarios, okay? If I was somebody who was in charge of changing certain things now i was going to wrap it up in my last slide but then i kept thinking there's more to add than this and i understand like if somebody was to actually put these steps into place okay there's always going to be um more things added because you know there's so many components to this okay so we're talking about agencies what they should do is set up, um, I think law enforcement should be set up like on the internet, like, um, how can I say this? Like set up internet harassment reporting centers by county. Like, okay, I live in Kern County, right? So the recipient of whether that be a fake job ad or it's a um, harassment email or whatever, wherever it's the recipient receives it, okay? Or they're being harassed online and they live 
in a particular county, they should be able to forward those emails, whatever, to a particular agency, law enforcement agency within their county, okay? In their county, there should be one for each county, okay? And that county uh, should have, they have two weeks to resolve the issue. That means get down to the bottom of who published the fake job ad, Who's giving you the negative um, emails? Who's been doing all of the, the harassment through electronic means? Okay. Now this is all there. This is all just a like a rough draft of it. Okay, because there's more things to outline. And just like I said, I thought I was done writing it, and there's more that needs to be added. Because I'm trying to think. Okay, who all does this involve? It's a lot that goes into creating laws and this is one of the reasons why I have a lot of respect for lawmakers okay because there is a lot of things that you know you could state a law but exactly how would it be implemented and I'm thinking okay well how would this work you know because like I said in the last slide okay implementing or acting out on laws takes forever that's why we have people in prison for so fucking long like 20 years and now they're bringing this person back in you go over something that happened years and years and years ago. This, this is the biggest problem and a lot of people complain about it. They've been complaining about this issue since I was a kid. About, oh, it's taking this, this trial's going on forever and ever and ever. It's, just, it's a waste of time, okay? Once a person gets um, identified as either being a human person who is human trafficking, okay? Human trafficking would be the same issue. Um, there would be, okay, now I think about this, okay? There, so the agency that you're reporting the internet harassment or the online harassment, they should have up to two weeks to resolve the issue. Now I'm thinking, okay, if you're if you're dealing with a targeting situation to where you have a human trafficker that's puppeteering your life and you report them, then I also think the Department of Human Re uh, Human Trafficking should uh, take uh, swift action to resolve the issue. Okay, if they find proof on this person, then this person needs to be detained oh, until a trial or whatever. Okay, or be penalized until the trial or however that, that works step by step within the legal system per state or whatever. Okay, because things are handled differently by uh, whatever jurisdiction you're in. Laws are this little, the, the la federal laws are pretty much the same, but how somebody would actually handle that within their state, you know what I mean, varies. Okay, but I think that there, there shouldn't be any playing around with this. It, just like any law, okay. To me should be acted upon swiftly now what should victims do now I know for years this is not my ideal world that ha that I visualize this this is what a lot of victims have been doing including myself victims should report companies that violate employment laws on web pages social media etc I know that there there used to be a lot of people who would talk about their problems that they experienced like on Glassdoor um, they would report their, you know, whether they worked for an employer that was just like shitty, didn't like come through when it came to their benefits or whatever. There should be certain, I'm not saying you can do this, you should do this on Glassdoor, but there should be certain uh, things that are available for people to look up, you know, uh, kind of like a reference guide. Maybe you could construct it like, um, like a consumer reports, but something that's based on corporations. Like, Companies that are good to work for. And there should be, like people know, they should be, hey, you know, this this particular company participated in human trafficking. They knowingly participated in human trafficking. Meaning, this is a company that if you work for, they don't care about your privacy. They don't care about, you know, violating your rights. They're going to treat you like shit. And they're going to encourage other people to treat you like shit. You probably, probably don't want to work for that company. And it should also be uh, a publication that's available for customers because there's a lot of people who do have a conscience, okay? They're not as much as I'd like there to be, okay? But there are some people, for example, who, who, won't, who won't buy from companies that uh, have anything to do with fur or animal harm, okay? There, there might be some people out there who would choose not to buy from companies that allow uh, human slavery to continue in the modern age. Okay, so people need to be aware about the companies that not only that they're working for, but the companies that they're supporting. There should be reporting for that. Also, talk about their experiences. Mixum should be able to talk about their experience if, if able to do so through social media, notification flyers. I never used the, the notification flyer. I don't think I did. I think I remember thinking about it. I don't know if I actually did. But I do know that I had a friend who was a targeted individual in Canada 
who did use the notification flyers as a method. So she would go to the grocery store and it was like a little small brief story about her being a targeted individual, about being a victim of a rumor campaign. Now, if I would, I don't recall using the pamphlet thing. I don't know why I have this feeling that I kind of did and I kind of didn't. I might have started off writing it, but never did. Maybe I did or maybe passed out some and just, I don't know. I just don't have a clear remembrance of that. I do remember thinking about it though. Okay. And generally at the time when I was thinking about this, I didn't know that I was Prince Alamehu, that there was some sort of issue about me being a male um, in my pre previous life. I didn't. Okay. But, and besides that's so, that was so weird. That whole story is so weird. Like uh, who, who could imagine it? Okay. But I do think it's a good idea for them to get their stories out as soon as possible and as much as possible. And the sad part is, is that they're going to have to find clever ways to do it. I do believe that I, even though my numbers are visible, that there was a lot of suppression of who I was and my ability to speak up for myself, which proves the fact that I was targeted. I was surrounded. I was basically having my world manipulated. Okay. But Sometimes the only way that targets can actually get their word uh, across is number one, if they're in working for a company, uh, then pass out your flyers. I did make some flyers for my workplace. Okay, that might be the reason why um, I'm remembering flyers. When I was working at a uh, manufacturer type home place, I had let the owner know that I was a victim of targeting. And then I also knew that the, the tension was thick there. So I passed out flyers letting people know that um, that there were certain people that I suspected of targeting me. Mind you, the pyramid peeps, I had no idea they were on there. People in the White House, I had no idea they were on there either. I just basically listed people that I was related to either directly or indirectly. Okay. I ended up losing my job. Okay. Mind you, I didn't care. But still, I ended up losing my job and I shouldn't have. Okay, so once again, it was like, fuck you, Maria. You're out on your own. You're going to have to deal with unemployment. I'm the one who gets held back once again. Okay, so there needs to be, the, the, the target needs to have a voice. And I know it's the perpetrator's wicked plan to keep these people quiet. Okay, so if the only place that you could talk about it is, uh, social media can be very blocked and a lot of your viewers might be perps anyway. Okay, you tell everybody you know. And you, you just go out there and just start talking. If you're out there in public, pass out flyers, bring it up. I mean, if you feel you're strong enough to create like a, a we call it a circus ring around you, do whatever you have to do. You have the right to express your voice. Do not let this program uh, destroy your life. I will tell you, I've been a victim of this program for a very long time. There is not a day that goes by that I feel any sort of peace. And I'm always feeling um, a lot of anxiety and it has destroyed so much of my life. Okay, so I'm going to wrap this video. Apparently, I needed to make this video. I needed to say these sort of things. Um, I'm sorry that it's kind of like rushed or whatever. Right now, my mind is now starting to focus on the real video that I wanted to make. But there's just a lot that goes on in the life of a targeted individual. I feel as though um, a lot of my life has been taken. Um, I am very much aware of the lifespan years. And I do understand that my life has... Um, literally been destroyed by this program and for the rest of my life i would like to pursue uh, the things that i need in order for me to say that my life was completely satisfied um, at least to a certain degree um, i choose to depart this life at my time whenever my time is okay and um you know i i have to do that in a way that i'm self-sufficient i am all i have so anyway i'm going to wrap up this video um i i hope you guys all enjoy your wonderful memorial day and i will be back with another video sometime later take care bye, -bye. okay so as for what the victims should do they should have uh they should report the companies that violate employment laws on websites and social media, etc. Now I know in the past, like for example, there's been people who've worked for certain companies and maybe the companies didn't promise the employees what they said they were going to. So there's, a, I know a few years ago, Glassdoor was filled with all kinds of like uh, comments from, you know, people who were burned by their last employer. But I think it'd be a good idea if they had like some other uh, official type website that's because mind you Glassdoor was a mixed bag of different complaints and inquiries about companies maybe they should have like a specific website for to report and make people aware of companies that participate in human trafficking and gang stalking because the reason why is because um, it would help people uh, 
for their for their own protection and their own peace of mind. I, as a as a woman who lives all by themselves herself, and and supports themselves, and I'm like I'm literally all I have. Do you honestly think I feel comfortable working around people who do who who has no problem divulging my information? Do you think I have a problem? Do you think I want to work for a company that thinks it's okay to waste my time year and year and year and year, thinking it's okay for them to match me? with somebody who is basically an abuser? I don't think so. People need to be warned about the places that they're walking into, okay? So if we had like websites that are built to report companies that participate in human trafficking, gang stalking, and even companies that have been just general harassment, okay? There are some companies, organizations, where I've heard people talking about, man, I don't wanna work there. And I've heard about complaints about a lot of companies from different people. Same company, but from different people, okay? These kind of companies need to be put on websites so that people know not to work for them and possibly not support them either. Because um, I, I think I might have mentioned this in another slide, but it's a good time for me to reemphasize this. There are some people who have certain ethics. They don't want to eat, uh, they, don't, they don't support certain companies that do certain things that are against, like, you know, humanity in some way, okay? Uh, some people may choose not to support companies that uh, promote and support human trafficking. Human trafficking, plainly stated, is human slavery. It's, it's modern day slavery. Okay, that's all it is. It's modern day slavery. And when you think about a company that has no problem wasting somebody's life and treating them like they are sub, like substandard humans or whatever, some people would have a problem with that. So people need to be aware of what kind of companies they're either going to work for or the kind of companies that they choose to support by, you know, buying from them. Okay. Also, I think victims should talk about their experiences if they're able to do so on social media, like make videos. And I've been saying that for years or do some sort of notification flyers. Now, I know I had a friend in Canada who not only made videos, but she would pass out notification flyers. Um, at the grocery store, which she would go to, her little routine, okay? And basically, as a targeted individual, the, pretty much the only routines that you do have is uh, if you go to the grocery store like I do, or you have to go pick up something at like at a, at a quick fix place, like, you know, you might need um, a, a box of matches for your house, or you might need, you know what I mean? And this, you, okay, basically, we have to take care of shopping, okay, the marketplace. The other places that she used to go, I think every every other week or something, she would get her nails done. Okay, now I mind you, I have already purchased uh, things to do my own nails, and I was planning on doing that for a very long time. It has nothing to do with the fact that I'm not making an income right now. Okay, but it does have. I do believe in taking care of your feet, your manicures, and stuff like that. I choose not to wait around in you know line for a long period of time. It's nothing personal. I think I've gotten great customer service. It's just the fact that I really don't like being in there for a very long time. So I've been doing my own nails, okay? But that was basically her routine. So she would pass around out her flyers in places that she would go to. There is nothing wrong with passing out flyers on the street. There is nothing wrong with uh, passing out flyers um, in certain events or whatever you, you however you want to do this, but you need to get your story out. Because one of the things that your perpetrators want to do is they want to put you in a, play, a position of vulnerability, okay? And they also want to paint out the picture. They want to be able to project an image of you um, from their point of view. And, and, and they, the reason and, and how they do this is suppress your voice. The very fact that I have my numbers skewed on YouTube is a, is a testament of that. The very fact that, you know, I was uh, a, uh, a person who people talked about and identified as somebody who was cloned and was once a man and was hated for this issue. And people did not come to my aid and let me suffer for many, 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 many years, including my fucked up family, because of something that was ignorant. Okay, thinking that because I was a man in my past life that I didn't deserve any support. I didn't deserve any fucking a, a reason to live. I had no, these people, the, literally these Nazis wanted me dead for that reason. Okay, so my thing is, is that, and they're going to make sure that you're ignorant about it. And they're, they're willing to kill an innocent person and bully an innocent person. Okay, but, and, and, and like I said, you know, it's important that the target has a chance 
to tell their story. And like I said, when I found before, I knew that I was Prince Alamejo. I didn't know what I was defending. I thought I was defending the fact that these people were bullying me over my hair. It was deeper than that. Okay, and I think that the people that watched my videos and heard me talking about my issue thought knew good and well. I, I had no idea of anything else. But see, the thing is, is that they, the per the perpetrators, had 100% control over the issue. So much so that I didn't even know what I was defending. I thought I was just defending myself against my family and some of the kids I used to go to school with. All right, so it's important to get your story out. Now, I made flyers back in 2015 when I first made this channel. I, they would have still been credible. You know why? Because I it shows, hey, I don't know what you're talking about. You were hating an innocent person over any, whatever, for a reason. The point is, get your story out, okay? And I think either way is good through social media, through notification flyers. Sometimes you may have to mail them, you know what I mean? And if for people that you used to know that you feel they need to be, oh, most importantly, do not be, be afraid to throw out names. This is so important. And I'm not, I'm going to add that to the writing because right now I'm doing the recording, but I'm going to add it to the writing. Do not be afraid to throw out names in the course of your targeting. And the reason why is because this is a covert over operation. Nobody is going to admit anything to you. Okay. But somehow or another, just like all this shit's going on behind the scenes right now, we had, you know, people like literally exiting this world because they got their karma. Okay. They got their karma. The thing is when you throw out people's names, okay. And you find out later if they're innocent, there's no wrong. There's, there's nothing wrong with coming back here and saying, you know what? I apologize for, for hurting people because they really didn't have anything. The real people who are responsible is so-and-so and so-and-so. And so. When you're a target, they leave you in the dark. So the only thing you can do is do the speculation game. Also, I think it's important that you use the hero cards in this, okay? Because do readings on all the people that you suspect of being in, involved in this, okay? And the reason why you got to throw out names, why? Because you're all alone. That's too bad, but throw, throw out names. Now, I throw a lot of disguise my perps a lot with code names, okay? I'm trying to show them a little bit of courtesy, even though I have no reason to. I have no reason to show any respect to these people, okay? But like I said, I always try to be the better person when it comes to this sort of issue. So don't be afraid to throw out names. And like I said, you can easily clear the name of the person if they're innocent. If they're not, then you know what? They shouldn't have done this shit in the first place. What they did to you is way too much for you to handle, and it's not fair for you to carry that burden alone. Talk, speak it out. Um, if you need to name names, name companies, whoever it is, it doesn't matter, okay? Because let me tell you something, you are fighting for your life. It is, that's just the way it is, okay? If you're blocked out on social media and you're also having problems in the nine to five world, they basically put the genocide wheels in motion, so you better start talking. Now, overall, I had mentioned earlier in some of my videos about um, knowing and having an understanding of the law and teaching your children the law. Um, I think because, you know, we live in a, in a world where everything's pretty much done on the computer, your cell phone, texting, messaging, um, all, all kinds of what you call it, apps to where you can like meet other people, social media, blah, 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 blah. When I was little, I knew that I knew what certain laws were, laws that related to you know, it was against the law to hit somebody if you were over the age of 18. I remember my parents teaching us that. You know, a lot of times we'd be bullied in school and my parents were like, okay, well, you're over the, you're um, a minor, okay? So my dad straight up told me, like, these kids that were bullying me, he was like, you know, you make sure you stand up for yourself. And he told me, hey, you're a minor, okay? But if you were over the age of 18, you were pretty limited on what you can do. Okay, so my dad encouraged me to stand up for myself. And, you know, I definitely, I, I believe that. Okay, um, but I did know the laws. Like, you know, I, I mentioned uh, the curfew, cur uh, curfew. I knew I needed to be in the house by 11 o'clock, you know, and that was pretty much the rule, either 10 or 11. I, I forgot what it was, but I knew that, you know, um, at that certain time, I was no longer able to be on the sidewalk. If I was outside, my parents said you could be on the porch. You could hang out on the porch. That's fine. But you can't be outside, outside. Do you know what I mean? So certain laws, regulations, and stuff like that should be taught to their kids, right? In order to be have a, a strong society, people need to be law-abiding. And they should teach. This is a part of my what-if plan, right? Not only should they... Um, 
parents should teach their kids about laws, but they should talk about issues relating to gang stalking and cyber stalking because this is one of the current issues, okay? Kids and kids and adults should know that a person who is convicted of stalking under federal law faces up to five years in prison and a $250,000 fine. If the defendant's unlawful conduct results in the death or physical injury of the victim, a conviction can land them in prison for 10, year, 10 or 20 years or even up to life. That's not a joke. Okay, so a lot of times, you know, I was talking about the depression that a targeted individual goes through. What if I committed suicide? In my last employee, I would, somebody needs to hold my past employer accountable. Okay, they need to hold farmer ass accountable and all these other people accountable. Why? Because they put in something that caused my death. God, they're responsible for that. Okay, so when you think about raising your kids, right? With raising to me, raising kids, they should have an understanding of the law. Okay, I know I told my kid about the law, you know, when, when he was little about certain things. You know, you can't do that. He already knew that you can go to jail for stealing. Okay, stuff like that. It's like these little lessons that you teach your kid, they should have an understanding. And I know a lot of kids bully other kids. Okay, so they should know, you know, uh, when they get old enough to get on that computer. All right, you should sit them down and say, hey, you know what? Do not bully other people. Okay, that should be that they should they should be taught from the, when they were kids not to bully kids on the playground, and they shouldn't be bullying people online either. And you can talk about laws. Okay, you, talking about laws like you know killing other people, uh, keeping your hands to yourself. You don't steal. You should respect people's space. Their private. You know these, these sort of things. Okay. And this is one thing that should be talked about in the home, okay? And, of course, you're going to reinforce these sort of things in the school system, right? Because I think a lot of kids have access to computers now. A lot of kids bring their telephones. And while they're at school, a lot of times they can sit here and harass other students by communicating, you know, what so-and-so's doing and blah, 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 blah. And the gossip and then the whole bullying starts up. So, I mean, I don't really, I've always believed that it's the responsibility of the education system to educate kids, okay? Meaning educate them on the specific subjects. I used to have my own personal feelings about the school system teaching kids things like sexual education. I personally thought that that was an issue that should be taught in the home, okay? But when it comes to activities that could occur on the property, of the school system and the school they get reports all the time of somebody's kid being bullied okay they should be talking about certain laws that are, that that they might have to deal with that could occur or certain issues that could occur on the school property okay so this is an issue that should also be taught in school okay about federal penalty penalties for stalking and cyber stalking okay so it's being taught at home, it's being reinforced at school. I don't think it should be the main, it should be taught in the school system. That should be their main way of learning it. Everything should be learned. Mostly your moral system should be taught at home, okay? But what should be reinforced is this issue in the school system. Reinforcement only, okay? It'd be sad if a kid hears this information for the first time in the school system because their parents really didn't give a shit, okay? But yes, that is the penalty for being convicted of stalking uh, under federal law. And of course, the penalties for stalking and cyber stalking would be in an employee handbook for employees as well. Okay, so I think I'm gonna wrap this video up. I think I, I kind of like expressed my point of view on some of these issues and this this issue was like really heavy on my mind and this is one thing that prevented me from making the video for Patreon. Um, obviously I'm dealing with a lot of pain um, with this issue and a lot of the feeling of not having the justice that I deserve and obviously you know it's affecting me in a lot of different ways. Okay um, you know I feel as though they have affected the quality of my life and, um, you know, I hope that in the future, number one, employers would stop participating in human in trafficking and that people will become aware. And if the people can only really fear the law or respect the law, if, of course, it is being enforced. Okay. 
uh, we live in a very lawless society. I mean, there's laws, okay? But people are either ignorant of them or they do not know how to implement them or whatever, okay? Now, I don't expect my uh, little hypothetical plan to ever go into action, but I am saying for those people who do care, you know, if you could teach your kids the dangers of all, you know, gang stalking, teaching them lessons of the law, teaching them, take it in your hands to make people, uh, your kids better, uh, meaning like, you know, you don't want your kids to adapt to the low standards of how things are. You don't want your kid to be one of those people who think it's okay to bully people. It's not okay. Okay. Um, I'm somebody who has been dealing with so much trauma and this is what you hear me. Okay. I've made so many videos on this. Okay. I have become a mentally ill person, even though I'm a very strong person, I deal with mental illness. One of the reasons why it affects my sleep. I'm somebody who I look how many times I talk about this conversation. It's old already. I go on and on and on and on about it. It has affected me like you don't even know. Okay. And still I wait around for justice. I do believe things are getting better, but at the same time, you know, it's, it's always slow shit, always slow shit when this shit should have turned around like immediately. Okay. It's a slow road to recovery. I did also want to uh, mention that state, uh, laws relating to stalking and cyber stalking, they're very, uh, they're going to vary from state to state, but they are pretty much coincide with how the federal laws are and how they look at it. Okay. Um, if, if you have somebody that you're dealing with, who's harassing you and you know, you got enough information on them. And if you don't, you can start collecting information. I suggest you take this area, this, this issue very seriously. Okay. And you sometimes in these situations, you have to take the law into your own hands meaning you're going to have to gather evidence and bring people to law, um, court if you can. Like there's certain people like on the, on the, on the employment level, sometimes you might even have to take a family member to, to, to court or whatever. Do what you have to do for your own peace of mind. Okay. Life is short. So I suggest you try to live the best life you possibly can. Do not let people take up your life and waste your life like they did mine. Okay, I'm going to wrap up this video. I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Enjoy the rest of Memorial Day, and I'll be back with another video sometime later. Take care. Bye-bye.